Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationblog.com. And in this episode of the Automation Minute, I want to show you how to set up DH45 communications to your Slick 500. Now, before we start, I need to tell you that only certain models of the Slick 500 family have a DH45 port. For instance, we can see here that the 503 has it. We can see here that the 502 has it. The 501 also has it. And you can also use what we call a link coupler to connect um, multiple DH45 uh, PLCs together on a network, in which case you would be plugging in. And that port, you're going to look at it, that port is, it's an RJ45, a lot like an Ethernet port. And uh, you may have some young people on your team who think it's an Ethernet port, but it's not. It's definitely an RJ45 that is used for DH45. And... Um, Many of these devices put out 24 volts on those pins. So the processors definitely do. And if the uh, AIC is powered up, it will as well. So don't plug your Ethernet cable. Don't let your young bucks on your team plug in an Ethernet cable into this because they could uh, damage their computer, I would imagine. Now, um, for devices, there are some devices that have serial ports that still can speak the DH45 language. And in those cases, you're going to typically use a, uh, an AIC Plus, a 1761 Net AIC, to get, on, get those devices onto um, DH-485. The thing is, the way you get your computer on DH-485 is you have to have either a really old computer and a 1747 PIC, or if you have a newer computer that doesn't have a real serial port or a native serial port, then you're going to have to use a USB to DH-485 converter. The USB to serial converters will not work with the H45. So if you have a USB-S or the triplet equivalent, that ain't going to get you on DH45. So you would either use an Allen Bradley 1747 UIC with the C13 cable, or you could use a generic UIC. Now, I happen to have, nobody's selling, <laughs> I couldn't find a uh, Allen Bradley 1747 UIC on sale anywhere. So I picked up this model used which is a third-party model, and that's what we're going to use today. Now, as far as setting up the drivers for this, you want to have the disk in your computer before you plug in the uh, plug in the unit. And I'll show you, I get some uh, video here. Depending on who you buy this model from, that is what's going to determine what the name of the driver is, what the name of the comp port's going to be. So I have some footage I used, uh, I have uh, drivers from two different companies, and you can see here when I plug it in with uh, with one company's disk, I, the device gets named one thing. And if I plug it in with another company's disk, the driver gets named something else. One of the names is actually a lot more useful than the other. But in any case, just be aware of that. Depending on who you uh, purchase this from will depend on what it will be called when you go to look at it inside Device Manager. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and take a look at it inside of Device Manager. I'll right click here on my computer, go to Properties, click on Device Manager. And then here on the ports, I can see this is just called a USB serial port, COM4. So with that said, let's go ahead and close that up and we'll open up RS Links Classic. And here we're going to go to Communications, Configure Drivers. And in this case, we're going to choose the RS-232 DF1 Devices driver. But when we add it, and I'm going to go ahead and select OK on the default name, we're going to see here for the device, we're actually going to choose a 1770 KF3. Okay, we'll make the COM port 4 to match what, it, what it's already set at. And then I can click on Auto Configure, but because this is DH45, it's not going to auto configure. So we'll wait for that to, uh, to finish here. And we're just going to click on OK. And we'll click on Close here. And now we'll double click our ABDF1-1 DH45 driver. And if everything's working, we should see our PLC show up. And I think the problem here is that this device is set up for CRC, not BCC. So let's go back in and edit the driver here. I'll change it to CRC. And then we'll close, close, and uh, see if we can get our PLC to show up. There it is. So not as easy to do as the uh, Slick 500 DF1 full duplex auto configure. But still, not difficult either. If you have the documentation that comes with the device, you'll know those settings and be able to select them uh, appropriately. So now that we see our 502, let's go ahead and open up uh, RS Logics 500. 
we'll maximize it. We will go to File New and we will create a new program for our 524. Click on OK. And um, we can go into the channel configuration. See by default it's 19.2, node address 1. This device only works at 19.2, so if you had an old Select 500 set at 9600, you'd be out of luck. The Allen Bradley model, you can flash its firmware to get 9600, but no lower than that. So hopefully you don't have any of very old DH45 devices out there at set at 2400, because if you do, you're going to have to go find a laptop with a serial port. All right, so that said, I'll cancel that. And now let's just write a very quick program to test out our, uh, our 502. In this case, I'm going to, uh, again, this isn't meant to be a ladder logic uh, course. You can buy my PLC basics if you need to learn all about ladder logic and what timers and counters do and all that. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in an XIO and I'm going to use T4 colon zero slash done. And then I'll start a branch here and I'll put a timer in ton using t4 colon zero with a time base of one second and a preset of we'll do 10,000 accumulate a zero and then on the next branch I'm just going to move that timers accumulate value to outputs but I don't know what what is one of my outputs here in that it looks like I have outputs in, I'm going to say slot one, two, three, four. So we'll say output colon 4.0. And then we'll end the branch and press enter. Now I need to go ahead and add that I.O. card. Matter of fact, I need to add all those I.O. cards or disable them for this program to work. So if I go to the I.O. configuration here and do a read I.O. config and go and browse for my PLC, Read IO config doesn't work because the 502 is so old it didn't support that. So uh, let me stop the video for a second, walk around here and see what IO cards I have, and then I'll come back and restart the video. Okay, so now let's add the IO cards that I have in. So um, I am going to first change the uh, chassis size to make it a seven slot chassis. And then I had an, uh, let's do inputs first. I had an IB16, and then I had two IV16s. And then if we go to outputs, I had an, it's here somewhere. I had an OV16. Now I also have an analog card in the last slot. But I don't want to add that in. Let me show you how you can uh, ignore that I.O. card. So we'll go ahead and click on X here. We'll go into the status file. And we will go to I.O. There she is. And I'm going to tell it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to tell it to ignore that, to not enable that slot. So it doesn't even see the analog card. All right, let's close that. Let's go ahead and uh, verify my project here. Yep, everything's good. We'll uh, save it. Untitled, sure, yes, replace the existing file. Now I'll go to com, system comms. Now, a lot of people gravitate towards this, uh, this dropdown, but that doesn't always work because who is to say that the driver I used last, the F1-1, is going to be the right driver? That's why I always tell people, use com, system comms. Because that will let you actually see the RS who and actually choose your PLC. All right, so let's go ahead and click on download. Do we really want to download untitled designed for a 502 to a PLC to a 502 with a default program in it? Sure, why not? We're just doing this on the bench. No concerns about stopping production. And uh, we're going to wait for it to download here across the DH485. And now I want to go online. Let's see how we did. We'll put this uh, program into the run mode. Yes. And now everything's green. It's running. And now you should be able to see on that output card, which should be right here, you should be able to see those lights changing every second based on that accumulate value. And that's it. That's how easy it is to use DH45 
to connect to and download programs to your Slick 500s. Now, if anything I did was overly complex for you, if I went too fast or if you like what you saw but would like to learn all about PLCs, how to write ladder logic, how the PLC scans it, all of that, then why don't you check out my uh, courses over at theautomationschool.com. I got PLC basics that covers the micro and really in turn because you're learning the micro, you're learning the slick as well as PAC basics which teaches you all about control logics and RS logics 5000 and studio 5000. And if you'd like to see more free videos like this published on YouTube, then why not support the show for as little as $3 a month? You can support the Automation Minute, the Automation Blog, the Automation Podcast, and the Automation Forums and get $10 worth of free downloads. That's right, $10 worth of free downloads every single month, including up to five episodes of the Automation Minute. So with that, that's the end of this episode of the Automation Minute. Until next time, peace.